Hello everyone, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis. Welcome to today's video. Today is a 8th edition review where we go over everything about 8th edition. We've had it now for about two weeks and a bit, so we've all had a chance to play it, get our thoughts on it. You've heard mine a bit on the podcast, but I think I ought to do them a little bit better and I've got a bit more experience. But rather than just sit here and ramble to you lot all day, I thought I'd get some help. So, I have got my friendship group from home, my game group, who you've all met in one form or another, uh, for battle reports and stuff. One of them is going to be leaving in about 15 minutes, so I'm going to introduce him now. We have Ben. Who is, who is not talking right now. He's, he's too busy doing train things. He's on a train. Hey, there we go. We have Kieran. Hello. Who you should know. We have James. Hello. And we have Rowan. Hello. And we've got a nice wide variety of armies and opinions in here, so we should get some nice thoughts about 8th edition. So we're going to go for probably the most part of an hour, maybe a little bit less, um, and Ben will probably leave at some point because he has to get off a train, but he'll try and get back in time. So I think we shall get started by talking about general stuff. What do we think of 8th edition overall? Pretty good, I think. I like it. Not too bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. I think it's an improvement overall. It's a lot more simplified. I definitely prefer that over the uh, seventh edition. Mm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's definitely. I think the word I easier to play. Yeah, it feels good to play. I think overall. Mm. I picked it up. Oh. You picked it picked it up more easily. I think is what came out there. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Because I mean, how many rules do we get wrong per game now? It's not many. Well, the odds of the shooting were so bloated that we'd we'd spend half the games arguing over rules than actually playing. Well, oh. it, with particular it's individuals. James. Oh, we just lost James. I don't know why we did, but we just lost James. Oh, oh he's, back. he's back. My bad. I pressed on button. <laughs> yep, highly professional YouTubing here, ladies and gentlemen. We're very organised, as you can see. Yes. So, yeah, that's a, a rough seal of approval for 8th edition overall, but now we need to get into the whole the meat of everything so the changes what we make of them how the game has played out and all of those things and i think one of the biggest things from seventh edition that um at least i had a gripe with was the goddamn psychic phase because ben <laughs> fuck your invisible bellicor honestly i couldn't i couldn't comment on it I've, i haven't played enough games or played any against any psychers other than uh, james and that was only in the occasional smite and when he survived the whole salvo... BMK said, does this still work? Oh, oh God. <laughs> ben, how is the text-to-speech still working? Oh, God. I, I may have lied about how proficient I am with uh, running this. <laughs> or I might have over-exaggerated it. Oh, boy. In fact, I didn't say anything. I thought no, you said you you'd did. sorted it. I thought you said you didn't mute it. No, I thought you did. I'd lied in the hope that he wouldn't try it again. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Right, okay, so we're going to have to deal with that now. So, basically, yeah, the psychic phase is something I had problems with in 7th edition, because playing orcs and then Tau... Go on, Ben. You were going to say something. I'm sorry, I just want to apologise, I had to be done. Yeah, anyway, you played the most psychic, I think, out of all of us, so you're probably the best one to comment on the changes to it. What, on psychic? Yeah. Okay. I've already used it a few times. What cost instead of, well, at, at a certain level you have to roll rather than just a, it's this and you've got to roll these dice. I like. Um, limiting. But we haven't got codexes yet, so. Yeah, we don't have a load of disciplines. And um, they've also massively muted perils. There's one type of mission where you can play with old sort of old perils back. But they definitely muted perils. It's not a mission, it's like an additional thing. Oh yeah, sorry, it's, it's a battle scape, Modified, isn't it, yeah. isn't it, or something? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I'm... Yeah, I'm for one, I'm definitely in favour of it. I mean, the fact that you need a psychic to deny sounds annoying. Yeah. But, it's then again... Bad, though. No. They're not that big a deal anymore, though. Because no. Because it's not as if you can deny every power, either. You can only deny one. Unless you rule say you can do more than one. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's just like the armies that have no psychers at all cannot deny at all. Tau and Necrons come to mind. Well, Necrons can. Oh, yeah, sorry. Can they? they have gloom prisons. Yeah, the, the, the Dark Eldar are another one. I don't think they have any psychic defence, as far as we know. 
Same with Admac. And Admac, yeah, good point. But yeah, I don't. Admac, it... Admac can ally in. Um, yeah, I'm going to any other army because yeah. just got keyword Imperium. True, and so. I think the dark, the dark Eldar might be able to if they play Inari as well. So, it's not yeah. too terrible for most of them. But yeah, psychic. I I approve of psychic. It's going to need more yeah. powers, but I approve. Again, it's just a lot simpler though. Just the way the rules have got more simplified. Speaking of things that have and haven't got simplified, characters. Oh, no, it's, it's fine. The characters. I like the new character rules. The only thing yeah, I don't like is, is command squads because command squads some of the box to buy is irrelevant. Um, yeah. Build, I don't know. And, the uh, yeah, the Tempestus is. command squad is still pretty fun. Yeah, because you... Well, it's because you can build them as normal guys as well. It's a yeah, yeah, okay. style box. Yeah. yeah it's the green one that's the worst. Because yeah. it's the whole... You buy it, the apothecary is separate. Mm. True. I mean, it's the same well, with so guard, is the, So is the, like, champion and the, the, the standard bearer and yeah. everything, aren't they? It's yeah. Daft. But, yeah, the other thing that's changed with, with characters as well as with command squads is... Um, They've changed from being like unit buffs to aura buffs, and they've also become very hard to snipe. Now, I approve of the hard to snipe thing until it's bloody Luke's Necrons, because god damn that Necron <laughs> oh, Lord. Please, no. I don't want to talk about that Necron. I, I like the, the whole current snipe thing because of, of, I don't know why, because I play a lot of scouts now. Scouts with snipers just go ignore the character priority rule. It's yeah. definitely made me think about getting yeah, some yeah. Samson has gone from my worst, my worst month blight ever taken to he my best. He is the best model, yeah. He's he broken. He is a model that needs balancing because he's too cheap. Yeah, he is way too cheap. Yeah, what cost is he? He's 75, 80 I think. points or something. What? 75, 80, something like that, yeah. yeah all the assassins got like almost cut in half in points. Blimey. Yeah. And he keeps all, all of his basically old rules. Maybe get better if anything. Like it hits on twos, it wounds infantry on twos, and ignores the vulnerable saves and a minus two rend. Yeah. With DP damage. I like the changes to assassins. Mm. Mm, um I think the aura buff thing I think has ups and downs. Because I mean I played my orcs today, um, and the war boss's run and charge aura is good, but there's a high risk that particularly with combat auras, you get left behind. Uh, and it's something that I think Kieran, you know from AOS as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit tricky to work around. But once you just getting like transitioning to it, once you work out that you've got to keep your character up with them, it's not a problem. It's just remembering to do it. Yeah. Anything else to add on characters? I can't comment because my characters haven't changed much. Like I've gained a couple of auras, and that's about it. Yeah, your monsters are still snipeable because they've got ten or more wounds. I think in general, I like I like the new character and like aura abilities rather than you being in a squad. Because sort of ends up doing the same thing, but um, you, they're just more effective because you can give it to more squads. Yeah, that's that's probably true, um, and a lot of units as well have gained aura benefits as well. Like for example, orc knobs and all things like that have gained a uh, aura of keeping order and things like that. I don't know quite how universal that is, but. What do you mean about keeping order? Uh, like so basically, there's a there's a rule for orc knobs where if a unit within six runs away on a six, that model doesn't flee. Uh, and I don't have that many units that have like aura effects, like venom throw auras and stuff like that. Well, it's kind of like a commissar where if he's nearby. Yeah, but it's not just for characters. Like commissars are characters; they have their auras. But I'm talking about unit auras as well. I don't think I've seen many unit auras. Ah, fair enough. I certainly haven't played against any. I, I am. I am just going to say this now. I really do apologise, but BNK said I am going now, guys. See ya. I may be back. Smiling face with open mouth. Oh, uh, nice one, Ben. And Thanks with that, that Ben is leaving. He may or may not be back. Depends on if he can get home yeah, in time to get back I, into something. I today. should be back about five to ten. So oh, okay. Catch, like five minutes. Yeah, so that's about forty minutes. That's about half an hour's time. So we'll see. Catch you guys later. All right. Yeah, okay. So now that he's gone and the bullshit's gone with him, um, let's move on to something that I know um, Kieran can talk sorry, about. Sorry, but uh, I just want to comment that um, with the new characters, it's definitely motivated me a lot more to, uh, to, to use sniper rifles. 
Yeah, sniper drones. Some previous edition yeah. that I never would have, never would have considered. Mm, I mean, I don't have snipers in orcs, but sniper drones might become a staple in my tower. Uh, they're not great, though, are they, out of all the snipers? Yeah, of all the snipers in the game, they're not bad, but they're yeah. better than nothing. I suppose nothing. you've got nothing better. Yeah. A lot of armies don't even have access to snipers, though. True, I mean, the Imperial guys do... Chaos don't, I don't think. Chaos yeah, don't. I can't think of anything. Yeah, it'd be... It'll be interesting to see how powerful snipers become, particularly if we get fragile characters, like psychers mm. and the like, that can just be picked off. Mm. Now, something that we can all talk about, because we've all had experience with it, is the changes to vehicles and monsters, specifically the fact that they're now tanky as hell. Hell yeah. Yeah, love them. Oh uh, my god. I don't know, god. I kind of miss the armor values. I think it kind of removes, uh, like, an extra a layer from the game. Like, thinking about your positioning of what angles you're going to look at things. Admittedly, yeah, losing firing arcs is something that, um, particularly when uh, you just get unloaded on from a gun that shouldn't even see you, is a little irritating. But mm. having said that, I think my main problem is either they gave vehicles too good a save or too high a toughness. Like, a high wound count I can live with, but they just seem too tanky right now. Like, it took... Like, Kieran, you know, it took you... A turn and a half to kill one orc truck. Yeah, but equally, like, just roll ridiculously well on your saves, and if you've been in cover, you'd have got the same saves last edition. Yes, so, but... Last edition, the same sort of thing would have happened. True, but, like, your, let's take your Turvigon, for example, then. That thing has 14 wounds and toughness 8, and a 3-up save, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they have, I don't think they've got crazy amounts tougher just because of the damage mechanic we'll, we'll come on to the damage mechanic but I know in last edition I could throw a squad of boys at a Turvigon and within two turns assuming my power claw didn't die I stood a decent chance of at least crippling it nowadays particularly because of toughness 8 I don't think I could do, I could reliably do that Like I threw 10 to 12 boys in a power claw at a Carnifex and only did Five wounds. And that was at T6. And yeah. I don't know, it just, they feel very tough right now. Yeah. They do feel very tough, but some of them are also very expensive. Yeah. There has been a notable increase with most things. Yeah, Even yeah. transports are quite ridiculous now sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I'm paying twice as much for trucks, battle wagons. How much? Are- how much are you paying for a truck in this edition? Uh, like, carried out the way you'd play? 70-ish. Last edition it was 35-ish. Yeah. Alright. Um, but it's not just... I think vehicles in general have had a price set because you pay for their guns. So, like, a battle wagon is now 200 points once you put its guns on it-ish. Uh, in last edition it demanded about 140. Um, whereas, I, I know monsters have had a price increase, but I think their toughness relative to vehicles has also gone up a bit more so that their points cost doesn't feel yeah. so bad because like when Kieran puts his Tyranids down he's putting down three or four monsters in any size game and killing them is a bloody nightmare yeah I can confess that <laughs> I, don't know, I, haven't fought, I haven't fought Kieran actually yet so I haven't, I haven't experienced that I it's have. not something I've had the joys of I have like even Luke's Necrons, and we know how powerful his Necrons were just all, I think we've all played Luke's Necrons yeah and we know how quickly <laughs> they can just clean boards up like he barely made a dent in the monsters. I think I, I won purely on objectives there. You did, well, but like all wait, your wait, big wait. stuff was Looks still like alive. Looks lost a game. Yeah. Um, that's, My God. That's, uh, well, that's a spoiler for next week's battle report, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. spoilers. <laughs> but yes. You uh, can just put a bleep over that. <laughs> maybe. Uh, but yeah, um, I do feel like monsters are in a good place right now, but I'm worried yeah. they're in too good a place right now. I think it's just working out what to focus on because, like, last edition, like, I'm not entirely sure. Like, the Turvigon, for instance, is 250 points. And other than spawning more gods, does nothing. It's worse in combat than last edition. It's more points for the same amount of shooting as last edition, even less because you can't take the templates on it. Like, they don't, it doesn't do a lot. True. And then you. I feel. I feel for most most stuff. It's you have to use the right weapons in the right situations, and if you're not using them, you're going to struggle. That yeah, a glass cannon or a melter gun can easily take massive chunks out of things. Unless well, you're playing 
looks Necrons. Not so much, and particularly with the big monsters, because the way toughness works now, particularly the high toughness monsters, wounding them on twos is just not a thing. Like, I keep coming back to that Turvigon. That thing's T8. Melters and rockets are wounding it on fours. Fours. Really it's a big piece of Yeah. Just, mm, if I know that's a later topic, never mind. Okay. Would have taken, last edition, it would have taken six melters to kill it. Whereas this edition, you can kill it in three. You can kill it in three, but st- I'm going to try and do some statistics on it. You're wounding it on fours. Well, that's so also the thing as well, is the fact that the more damage you do, the worse they get. That's like, that true. Damage, that damage statistic is... What? Four melter hits, whereas last edition took six melter hits to kill it. Yes. You, and six wounds going through. Statistically, it can die faster, but generally it dies slower. Yeah. But, like, that's the, the change of the damage mechanic. It means that, you know, shooting the right weapons at the right things mm. does more damage. True. I think we'll actually skip over a few things and we'll come on to damage since we keep coming back to it. AP and damage. Because, obviously, we call it rend because that's what we know from Age of Sigma, but the AP system... Yay or nay? Yay. I've yeah. yet to come to an opinion on it. I, I prefer it. Yeah, massively. But equally, my army would have had absolutely no access to AP2, really, at all. Whereas now, you know, things with an AP of 1 or an AP of 2... You've like, got them everywhere. Then can stop chipping away at things. Well, yeah. it's just the fact that a weapon isn't just absolutely worthless against a target because it can't ignore their armour. Everything is good against everything. Yes, I think the units that have suffered it to the new system are units like bolters, pulse rifles, and the like. The things that were but about then again, a... they're slightly more effective against a wider range of top. Yeah, uh, they they, they, they scale up quite nicely. Yes, but for what they're designed to do, which is generally rule of thumb, deal with infantry. Anything that was AP five has had a massive nerf. Because yeah, now they do nothing. They That's now have no AP. And the other thing is, with I come back to pulse rifles, they've lost that. The benefits of strength five are basically null and void versus strength four until you get up to toughness eight. Well, room toughness four, which is the majority of infantry in the game, better. The majority of infantry, I think, is toughness three. I, I know marines are common, but I think model by model, I think the most common infantry is toughness three. I think. Yeah, well, you would half of the infantry in the game. I think. Mm. I don't think necessarily strength five's got worse. I think toughness three's got better. Yes, that might be a better way of looking at it. Actually, yeah, that's a good way of thinking. But yeah, the power. Uh, I, I I'm not going to rant about Tau because I did that on the podcast by accident. Um, but Tau shooting phases have definitely taken a hit this edition simply because AP five and AP four have lost a lot of or what used to be AP5 and AP4 that were just putting buckets of holes in stuff just aren't anymore. Whereas it's now about weight of fire. I think in terms of killing stuff, weight of fire has become more important than precision unless it's a big target, I think. Mm. No, I'd agree with that, yeah. Well, I feel it's, I think, comes back to the damage again. It's like, Multi-damage um, weapons are often not good against infantry because most infantry just has one wound, so you're wasting you're wasting damage there. I can have game today firing auto cannons at guardsmen. <laughs> yeah, I, I I respect the way the damage system works, but it doesn't spill over because otherwise it makes something like the swarm lord absolutely oh, yeah. <laughs> horrible to face. Yeah. Having said that, it means that you can't chuck elite in what, what was elite infantry that used to just like have a bucket of attacks with its heavy special weapons and just chow through stuff has definitely lost a bit of its impetus in doing that because it swapped its um, AP for damage in many cases and that's meant it slowed it down at getting through hordes of infantry which by the way just I need to point this out hordes of infantry are very good this edition oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. which lines up very nicely for Tyranids as we've already noted which is why I'm scared of playing against Kieran I've yeah. played him three times and I'm scared <laughs> Undefeated as of eighth. <laughs> Un- victorious as of eighth. Come fight my guardsmen. <laughs> I look forward to throwing my orcs at your guardsmen. I look forward to that. Uh, but yeah, I think while we're on um, changes to stats, let's do the stat line. 
because obviously we now have movement values, we've got the loss of initiative values, uh, the morale system has changed. That There's a whole lot of changes going on on the stat line. Typically more wounds. And typically more wounds to deal with the damage system and stuff. Uh, but movement values, fully approved, I would say. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy yeah. with that. Um, Even if it's just the, the like, simplicity of the game, because like, a lot of the units that have a movement value that's different from 5 or 6 would have had to have special rules that made them faster anyway. Yeah, and same with slower, like slow and purposeful on Mega Knobs is now just, oh, you'll move 4. Yeah, it, it just makes just means there's a lot less rules to have to like churn through. Agreed. Um, the simplification of weapon skill also needs pointing out because, well, Lilith Hesperax I... suddenly became a lot more fragile. Yeah, I haven't really noticed a problem with it. No, I haven't noticed a problem with it. I'm not saying there is a problem with it. I'm but just... then again, I've run any really high weapon skill units. Yeah, because I can imagine that, like, I come back to Lilith because she was weapon skill 9 and she relied on being untouchable in combat. And yet all of a yeah. sudden now orcs are hitting her on 3s all the time instead of 5s and that's a big change. I'm not saying I disapprove, I'm, I'm just pointing it out. No, no, that's fair. She did get more wounds to compensate there. So. True. Um, it, it applies really across the board, like the Keeper of Secrets particularly is another one. Yeah. Um, and then of course, Initiative. Now, I made no bones when 8th edition was announced. I don't like, just because of how annoying it can be, the AOS You Go I Go system. However, the charging units fight first and the two command point interrupt... They've done it for me. I, th I, th I think I actually quite like the 8th combat system. It feels right. Yeah, the un my only problem will be, with it will be if there's a big game. Yeah. How well, it'll translate. But equally, because 40k is much more balanced between shooting and combat, unlike AOS, I don't mm. have so many combats going on. Yeah, we'll come back to shooting versus assault, I think. Um, but yeah, it, it hasn't felt like Age of Sigmar where there was like, there's five units in combat and I know I'm going to lose two of them. Yeah. Uh, now it feels like, yeah, I can afford to wait on that unit, or if I really need to, I've got my two command point interrupt. Yeah, yeah. And charging units fight first, yay. Well, that and you can also retreat from combat, so it's not as big a deal anymore. Oh, yeah. True. True, true. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I really like. It isn't somebody gets charged and basically game over. Can't leave yeah. that combat. Yeah, that really dead. yeah. might as well just ignore that uh, model for the rest of the game. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, and they've also they balanced the extra power of combat slightly by changing Overwatch because Overwatch now is because the problem with seventh ad is you just had like chaff units for Overwatch that were just for what we would call eat the Overwatch, but you can't do that anymore, which I approve of. Mm. Yeah, like I'd, I'd have done that a lot in seventh. You did do that a lot in seventh. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel like I'm. I'm not... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, I think the assault phase has definitely improved massively, it needed to, but it doesn't yeah. feel overpowering. No. I think, I think it, just it, it, one of the it has you considered charging some units that you never would have considered in 7th. Uh, in, in yeah, yeah. And, and the fact you can I've, charge vehicles as well. I've definitely been charging... Uh, um, I should see into some vehicles. Yep, yeah, that's true. Whether it's worked out well or not, uh, well. Mm. Yeah, that that's a story for another day, I think. I think, I think vehicles in combat do need some more rules. Yeah. Like, I don't think it, I don't think it really makes sense that, um, like, that tanks and stuff wouldn't be able to just, like, move back and still shoot. Like, they can't shoot. I don't think that makes sense for a lot of things. Um, that varies by vehicle. I think there are some that can. I know the, like, the Gorkonaut can. I think can. the only ones that can are like Bane Blades, like Titanic vehicles. I know really Titanic can. I, can the Lehman Ross do it? Because I thought that might no, be able to. No, Russes can't do it. Ah, okay. I thought if anything could, it would be the Lehman Ross. Because I know the Gorkonaut could do it. Anything that's a walker? No, that's a lie. Uh, no, the, I don't think all walkers. No, no Dreadnoughts can't. can't. Yeah, that's all a lie. Um... Yeah, I think there's going to be need to be more, but then again, we're still in the index phase, not the codex phase, so I think we yeah. we have to expect that a little bit. Um, right, is the main... I think I've covered most of the things on there. Um, command points. Let, let's touch on command points. <laughs> All the times I've used them, they've never done anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think they're absolutely if anything, I get worse rules. 
I'm glad they the exist. Oh, well, that pesky one, I'll reroll it to anything but a one. I'll look another one. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. happened too many times. Better reroll that one to save my guy from uh, dying from an overheating melter. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, plasma. Yeah. I, I'm glad command points exist, and I think as we get more, if you play the narrative missions, there's a lot more stratagems in them, and they yeah. actually do really mix it up if you use them right. A lot of the mission stratagems are great, but I mean they're still good in general. But I, yeah, I feel like, I feel most of them I use rerolls. Yeah. I think all of them I've used on rerolls. I've yeah, used not a lot of them do much. I've used one interrupt, I think maybe two, but everything else has been rerolls. Hmm. I think they balance. They even balance that pretty well because it's forced to one per phase. So you can't just throw, particularly if you're playing brigade and you've got twelve command points. Yeah, you, you can't, can't just chuck them around. Throw rerolls at things until it goes away. Yeah, it is well balanced. Although when we get up to the big games and people start bringing multiple detachments, the com- the power of those command points could get quite scary. Yeah, but like you get to a point where you're like, oh, I got like basically one reroll. <coughs> Try again. Right. You'll, you'll reach a point where it's like, oh, I've just got to reroll per phase at this point. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It, it's good. And I think while we're here, the detachment system, um, the, the fact that we've got scaling detachments now and different force orgs and unique, like, narrative yeah. thematic force orgs, so down with that. I like how we all mm. share force orgs now as well. Yeah. Like, we all pick it up when the codex has come out. Maybe. Well, see, I'm hoping they don't do that because that's just going to be like battalions or like uh, seven dead all over again. And well, the one thing that we get, we I really hope I I think I saw someone talking about it, but I really hope we don't get formations back. Yeah. Mm. Because like, formations like, were yeah. annoying. All right. Um, I hope we get like unique stratagems for each of the um, codexes. Oh, that sounds good. That would be good enough. Yeah, yeah, unique warlord traits, unique psychic powers, and unique stratagems would probably be a yeah. good basis. Because, let's be honest, how many of us have forgotten to do warlord traits? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I've done a single warlord trait, actually. Yeah, I've forgotten pretty much every single game to do I'm, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure you all said the word warlord traits in this edition until I got my rulebook out and found the warlord trait table and said, no, that totally is. <laughs> yeah, I think at one point we did assume there were no warlord traits. They're not like a really great. inconspicuous little thing. Yeah. They're not great, no, but they're a nice little buff to just have. Yeah. yeah, and I think the problem is we were kind of spoiled last edition because we had like five tables to roll on, four in the rule book and then our own. So I think like, we always knew warlord traits were a thing. And another thing is um, because some characters had locked traits, you just got used to it. Um, whereas yeah. now they don't. Like Farsight, Gazkull, and Co. have lost them. They might regain them in um Yeah, maybe the actually. So. Maybe. I like the pick them as well. That's so much better than before. The what? That you can actually do all the traits and psychic powers you want. Yeah. Ah, you can mm. pick, yeah. It just didn't make sense that you'd like roll something, you'd be like, okay, well great, my one wound guy has eternal warrior. Awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> True. And speaking of picking, uh the deployment maps, we've got six now. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And on the, on the boards we've played, uh, what's, what's the deployment of Colby? It's basically slightly narrower in the middle. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, well, it, it's, it's an extra... Two two board. Yeah, yeah. But even on larger it. boards, it's only an extra, it's, what, yeah. two it's inches so at a funny angle? Yeah, three the inches per side. So, yeah. I didn't quite work out on that, but that's because the board was smaller. I mean, imagine for assault-based armies, that extra two inches is yeah. quite valuable. But, uh, True, and in large games, you can't just camp at the back. If you're a shooting army, mm. it's yeah. Uh, is there anything else on here? Um, we've talked about psychic characters, monsters, and vehicles, shooting and assault. Well, we've touched on shooting and assault. I think. Um, will we say that they're pretty well balanced now, or is there now much of, a bit more too much of an assault lean? Do we think? No, I think they're pretty well balanced. They're pretty good. Okay, I, good. Think, I think Assault definitely needed a buff, and I think it has gotten that buff. Oh, yeah. But it's not. But uh, uh, shooting at the same time has also gotten a couple things which help um, help it not be overpowered. Yeah, um, and one of those things, uh, for good or for ill, is the ditching of templates. Yes. I'm definitely happy with that. Yeah. 
it definitely helps speed along the games and the fact that you're not constantly maintaining that exact two inches unit yeah. yes yes I mean it's, it's annoying for me as an orc player because god damn it my templates never hit anything anymore but um, it's certainly given flamers a new lease on life yeah mm. definitely I'm sure I've said this many a times but I fully endorse as many flamers as you can on a crisis suit <laughs> yeah Quite possibly. I mean, I'd, I'd swear by one just as point defense. Yeah, mate, it's very amazing. Oh, that fuck that gun. Screw <laughs> that gun. Screw <laughs> that gun. I hate that gun. Just, oh, I hate the acid spray. You give me so many things to look forward to when I eventually play against. Uh, mm, Basically, it's so an 18 inch range flamer that if he doesn't move is 2d6 shot, strength 7, with 1 AP and d3 damage. It's ridiculous on toast. That, that's definitely that's a meaty attack right there. My guardsmen were love eating that. Yes, because auto hits. <laughs> oh, it's, it's ridiculous right now. Um. Actually, I want to raise a point that I raised on the podcast, and I don't think I did it very well. Army variety. Not in terms of the meta, like how many armies are going to be in the meta, but in terms of a variety of builds within a particular faction. Because what's worrying me, and I can only say this with Tau and Orcs, is I'm not sure if they're going to allow different styles within the same index, or sorry, same army. Because Tau feel like playing maneuverable and sniping things off doesn't really work. Or that could just be the Tau are bad, I don't know. Orcs, Death Dread can wall. Maybe I didn't play it very well, but it didn't feel particularly effective. Whereas when I, I think... Put... Go on. I think early in this edition, it's a bit early to say whether one particular style of play doesn't work entirely for one army. I mean, it, it's obvious that armies like Tau are more built towards a more stationary gun line kind of warfare. Yes, and what worries me is that, particularly when we get into the con- yeah. once we start building a meta, because we will, because we do, we're people and we like to fight and stuff, um, we will end up saying, right, the only way to play Tau at a tournament level is to camp. The only way to play Orcs at a competitive level is to put a horde of boys on the table. That's what I don't want to see, and that's that's a concern that I have and I know we can't judge that and without codices and without time well, I mean, we that's can't. What that's what happened in the 7th edition. It happened to an extent, but at the same time... The... Well, I, I think it needs to happen to an extent, otherwise what's the difference between all the armies? Yes, but... Yeah, the... then, then the individual armies don't have their individual strengths and weaknesses. But, okay, then I raise you what is the point of Farsight in Camp in a Corner Town? What is the point of Badrock in Green Tide Orcs? What deep is the... Stri- like, deep striking into the enemy's lines to pick off targets. It doesn't work. I've done it. It doesn't work. Maybe you're not using it right now. I, I can't think of another way to do it. My argument with the whole themed list things and how they're going to work is you've got a lot more scope with things because you've got yeah, yeah. spearhead detachments, you have whatever the fast attack attachment is and things. Yeah. So it does encourage you to, to be like, right, okay, I'm going to play just this and that is what my army's going to do. Yes, and I just worry that it's going to be a case of, well, if I don't do it, or I don't include this, that, the other... Yeah. And I know 7th did that, and that's a, qu- a problem that a lot of people had with 7th. I just don't want 8th to go the same way, because as a narrative-driven player, coming up with thematic lists is, like, second on my list after winning. So it kind of matters to me. Yeah, as I've said, it is very early. And it, um, I think when the Codex has come out, out yeah, yeah, we can't really say much about can't that. properly comment. Yeah. I suppose we'll... F- well... Next month's rumoured to be the Primaris and... Death Guard. The Nurgle one. Death Guard. I think after, after the, the following months will really really reveal to us what, they, uh, what they've done with the Codexes and how each is going to play. Mm. Because generally the game feels mostly pretty well balanced right now. I mean, we know there are some things that are pretty good. Cough, cough, Tyranids. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're apologising. You didn't write the book. Um, I played them when they were terrible. Yeah, I know. And as a Tau player, I will do the same. I'll play them when they're terrible. Um, but the game feels more balanced than it did. And that has to be that has to be mentioned, has to be commended, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I haven't won yet, but I've come down close on a couple of occasions. And 
every army feels usable, which is good. I'm more willing to try this edition is to play games that aren't tactical objectives because I don't think you need them to balance it anymore. Maybe not actually. Mm. Yeah, because the problem. I've actually tried with tactical objectives. Yeah. We've played, I think, three. I've played two games with tacobs, um, and we played one narrative, one eternal, and yeah, two eternal. So yeah, two eternal, two maelstrom, one narrative. I've played. Yeah, I played a narrative game against uh, Luke actually. How did that go? Because how did how did narrative feel? Well, I mean, it felt <laughs> all right, but with the fact that we you we also used uh, match play like points. I feel it. I feel it was good, but it didn't fit with match play. Like it is. It is for narrative, really. Yeah, because me and Kieran were trying a narrative game early. We didn't get a chance to film it because we ran out of time. But um, it certainly felt like if you had, if you don't plan to play that narrative mission, you can accidentally end up scumming it um, by yeah. bringing, let's say, a flyer in an ambush or something like that. Yeah. Um, but. Having said that, I I really want to give narrative a proper crack. Um, as to whether power or points will be the way we play it, uh, because I've tested the power system, and admittedly it was Necrons v Tau, so I got blown off the board. Um, <laughs> but I think the power system is pretty close. I'm not going to call it, it's obviously not perfect because it can't account for all the individual tweaks, but it feels pretty close. The power system's fine, so long as you don't go, right, I'm, I'm doing power, I'm going to give my unit every upgrade ever. Yeah. Which, that's the thing, for my Death Watch, I kind of have to do that. Yeah, a, fi a five-man veteran team is nine power. That's a lot of power. But I imagine that, yeah, I imagine they, like, think of that when they're giving it its individual power, like, cost. It's like, the thing is, that if I do take that, I'm kind of forced to take, all right, well, I've sort of got to take four Frank cannons. Well, that's, to be fair, though, nine anything. power is ten orc boys. Really? Ten? No, twenty. Oh. Sorry, twenty. Oh, okay. Twenty. 20. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I can't do mathematics today. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's twenty boys for five vets on power. Which sounds about right to me. Yeah, so it's not too terrible. And when you play narrative, you can choose to override the power system if you want to for attack and defense. Because let's say, for example, I've built a siege orc list to play a blitz uh, or a meat grinder and I just have one more power so I should Speaking be on top. Speaking of which, I really would like to try the blitz. Uh, oh god, we need to do it yeah. because you've got guard and there's marines around. We need to do a blitz. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking no for a goddamn answer. When oh, we get shit. when we get to 10,000, we're, we're getting on the way to 10,000 now, we might do that for 10,000. Just take a massive board and do it. I'm so tempted. Just take up all the board. In the, uh, in the shop for a day. Screw it, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be Two giant walls of Mars. Uh, uh, seriously, you just hear me out on this. Two lines of trenches. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm definitely up for it. Oh, yeah, it just it, it screams right in my head, and I just need <laughs> to do it. I need to do it. <sighs> right, I'm just going to have to flick through my rule book and see if there's anything. Is there anything else that you think that we've missed that you want to resolve or talk about particularly? I think we've covered yeah. most of the major points of the changes. <laughs> what was that? I think in, in no, that was me dropping a screw. My bad. <laughs> I think uh, invulnerable saves have gotten more available now in this edition. They're ignorable by mortals, but I don't know how. But I don't think mortal wounds are that common. Well, not for AOS, in AOS, like you could come across mortal wounds pretty easily. True. I think that's. I think. But in this one, you can't really. Well, you said your Tyranids had a lot of mortal wounds knocking around, didn't you? Tau have quite a few mortal wounds around as well. Do they? Uh, seek missiles and rail. Well, that's, that's oh, rail. I, I always forget rail. Track. Sorry, I forgot about rail. Like, most stuff have like two or three ways. Yeah. And the, the most access to them would be stuff like Admech. Because Haywire. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think Invons are in a good place right now, and the fact that Feel No Pain has been not nerfed, but brought into line probably helps. Until we see what the, the Nurgle Marine product is like. Oh yeah, we need to wait for Death Guard before in Thousand Suns before we make that judgement actually. Yeah. Because we haven't played Demons yet so we don't quite know how terrifying it's going to get. <laughs> is there no one, uh, do we have any Demon players? I've got Demons but just calm. Just calm. 
Which, by the way, um, I want to fight those. I really do. They look terrifying, but I want to fight them. This is the thing I'm really excited about this edition. All three of the armies look like they've actually improved. Harlequins look good. Con Demons look playable now. And Harlequins look good. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they did get, they did get a four up and vulnerable rather than a five up now, didn't they? And run I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the changes. What waffle waff they done to them? A lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Could you be any more specific? Like, they've got, like, all the rules have been made more normal, so they don't have, like, the risk and stuff that you have. Yeah. But because of that, it, I think it's become more powerful because it's just been simplified, so stuff that would have been, like, um, an improved jink is now just minus one to hit. True, and they've all got run and charge, haven't they? Yeah. Just ow. And then most of them can run a flat six inches. Yeah, that gives them a... Th- uh, they're move six, right? Uh, eight, I think. Oh, oh blimey, Max. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> That's an average hit range of 21. Yeah, and the fact you can fire um, assault weapons after running. Yeah. Yeah. It's about the length of the board. It's the length of the no man's land between deployment zones. Charging a from charging from deployment into a yeah front line. Yeah, that that's oh, lovely. Quins Quins look like they could be quite. The only thing that's going to keep them in check is numbers. I'm if they were cheap, I'd be worried. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're not cheap. Points for them. So. Yeah. But yeah, I think if I were to sum up eighth edition in one word, I would go with probably streamlined, in a good way. I would definitely put it that way. Streamlined in a good way. Still issues, but most of the concerns we had from 7th have been ironed out. Just the removal of lots of rules that like you're going to spend 20 minutes looking through the blue book yeah, didn't... and then argue over, and then... Yeah. yeah, didn't... Was it Luke or someone mentioned it today? There was a rule in the 7th edition rule that you're not allowed to be within one inch of a unit at any time. Or something. Did Luke mention yeah, it today? Yeah, I think, yeah. And like, there's so many rules buried in 7th edition that it's just like... That's a thing. That no one ever knew existed because they were only on one, uh, one unit. Like, I'm pretty sure even in 7th, I still kept getting rules mixed up uh, from like stuff back in 5th and 6th yep. edition. Guilty. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh, this is the way it works. And then I look at the rule book and that's completely not how it works at all. Guilty. Well, the rule doesn't exist. I've <laughs> 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 had that happen before. Guilty. Oh, my God. Okay, well... <laughs> Oh, well, I'm just hallucinating, apparently. Yeah, that, 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 that definitely happened on more than one occasion. Um, but, yeah, I think, unless there's anything else that people have major to add, I think we can move into the summary. No, I think that's it. Okay. In that I case, think uh, one, something worth discussing is people's plans for 8th edition. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. What, what they think they're going to... If they've got any future plans with... Armies building, etc. Yeah, we can do that. And and we could discuss uh, the the your channel as well. Uh, we could do, yeah. Um, so yeah, oh, we'll, let's no. let's let's wrap up the eighth edition bit. <laughs> no, we, yes. Let's no, wrap up. Let's wrap up eighth edition, and then we'll do that, and then, then we don't have to wait. Make people wait for that. So if people want to leave, they can. But the suspense, yeah. So yeah, in summary, your thoughts on eighth edition so far? Quite Five out of seven. <laughs> Okay. I've, 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 I've really liked the changes, yeah. For the most part. Fair enough. Well, I think it's, it's quicker, which I do like, because 7th edition took forever sometimes. Yeah. Which is spending it all day for yeah. one game. So now you can get several games in. Well, no, maybe brilliant. that's just because we were slow. Or because well, me and Ben yeah. were bickering all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of bickering. <laughs> what the rules were. True. Yeah, those were, you're not looking at rules a lot of time as well. Like I said, that was always, I never knew the rules. I was always looking stuff up. And now I'm not because it's... This edition, I find more time trying to find the page. <laughs> yeah, there is, I think, yeah, the layout of the rule books and the indexes are a bit questionable. I mean, yeah, like, could they not just put the points cost for each U army at the end of that section? That would have made so much more sense. I mean, I don't like the space means as well, how, like, all the weapon options... Oh yeah. Uh, are all, yeah, are all uh, yeah actually space Ben was building his space walls one he couldn't find a wolf lord on foot because it lived under Space Marine Captain. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, because yeah, that Death Watch is the thing as well. The Death Watch they don't look like they have a lot of units, they have like I think it's like six or seven units, but then um oh my god no. 
But then it says at the front, it says, oh, these, like, 12 units, like all the land rays and the dreadnoughts and the captains, use these from the Space Marine section. Just replace their name with Death Watch. <laughs> Pretty much. So I've got flipbacks, I've got flipbacks of Space Marines, I forget what my captain costs. I've got a bunch of Death Watch because they've got different upgrades. I've got a flipback to figure out points. The Space Marine <laughs> one's first, and the Death Watch is towards the end, it's just so annoying. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even doing it with orcs is a pain, so I can't even imagine what it's like for Space Marines. I will be happy when the Codex is out. Second. <laughs> Watch them be equally as confusing. Oh, <laughs> God, no. Even worse, like, it's all scattered through the book. <laughs> it's like, where's Wally of, uh, of <laughs> data values? Oh, dear. But, yeah, so that, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much is our thoughts on 8th edition. It's pretty good. And we like it. Mostly. With rice. And it's better than 7th. <laughs> yeah, so if you're here for 8th edition, and nothing but 8th edition, you don't want to hear us ramble about army ideas and uh, the channel, then feel free to check out now. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're now going to ramble for probably about 10 minutes because that's what we like to do. Bicker like old ladies. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. I'm kind of glad we didn't have Space Wolf Ben here because they'd have been a bit more bickering. Particularly, with... oh, you can't say that. He might be listening. No, he'll he'll just shout at me next time he sees me saying that. <laughs> what are you doing? It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> well, he might watch the video. He'll just he'll just hear us all then, and I know he has. <laughs> okay. Ugh. So yeah, um, where are people going with Eighth Edition then? Uh, new armies, old armies. What are we thinking? I need snipers. <laughs> lots of them but um yeah i definitely well you guys know that i've got military tempestus that i've been i'll be building that up over the next edition mm. basically just buying the the starter kit over and over again until i'm happy and then getting valkyries i feel that might be a bit much no, that might be a bit but valkyries I fly us. Uh, if i'm with if I'm gonna, if anything, I'm gonna get after the Starbucks. It might be Basilisks. Those look fun. Well, they Death Star missiles. I want a Death Star missile. Because Basilisks don't have minimum range anymore, which is brilliant. Uh, but no, like flyers are easier to deal with. So I feel guilty. Like if I if I make an all flying trip, you be able to use it. Yeah, before like we never used flyers because no one ever had. Yeah, we had a bit of a gentleman's agreement not to fly unless you've previously discussed it with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the gentleman's agreement. Uh, be a dick. If I bring a flyer to a game, I don't have to tell people in advance. Yeah. Yeah, that. Um, I think you might have cut out there. Um, but yeah. He's cut out eternally. Where am I back? Uh, oh, yeah. I see. Oh, it's just, you, you dropped halfway through a sentence there. I'm sorry. No, so it's just nice to be able to bring flyers and not be awful. Yeah, like yeah. my Razor Shark, I got like one use out of it in seventh, maybe two. Uh, and yeah. now I can use it. I can't shake that guilt. <laughs> Just feeling bad about bringing flyers. But then again, there's a, there's a lot more anti-flyer in the game as well. It's not just mm. like, like, I know, what is the thing that's got like, plus one to hit against fly? I know Velocity Trackers do, but I don't know there's something else that does. Oh, I wasn't aware there was anything else. Oh, it was your, is it your tentaclids? Oh, they get to reroll to hit. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. I had Luke suddenly regretted that he shouldn't that he mentioned. Well, the anti air stuff now look. is also a lot better because it's just plus one to hit flyers, so it ignores that minus one usually. Yeah. But then it's also um, minus one to hit like anything that's not flying. Hmm. So it's, yeah. not, it's still not as effective as ground units, but it's still a hell of a lot more better than snap shooting. Yeah, I'd yeah. agree with that. Um, and I think where I'm gonna go, like, I want to keep my tail going, but. If they're going to be as bad as they feel, it's not that they play badly or that they are bad. Is that they feel <laughs> bad? That's I think I think that's the I can't sum it any better than they feel bad because I don't get the same buzz of dropping in a crisis bomb and that doesn't feel as good as it used to. So maybe the tower going to go on the back burners for a bit because I've got so many ideas buzzing around in my head about orcs. Like I want to try Daka orcs. I want to try. Arch Arsonist of Sheridan Orcs, I want to try Green Tide, I want to try Canwall, I want to try Cult of Speed. I've got so many ideas bouncing off that I think my Orcs are going to get some time in the sun. I think the thing is that like, you're used to them doing better. Yes. When they do the naff, you're like, ah, that was really bad. Yeah, but like, I think most people acknowledge that they are 
definitely sub tier right now. I haven't won a single game with my Talus edition. No, I don't know about I've played. I've played. I've only played two, but I got dropped in both of them. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be one of those things that we need to wait and see. But if they keep codexes, etc., codices, yeah. etc., yeah. But if they keep feeling bad, like, I don't mind if they're a subpar army because that's a challenge to overcome. But if they feel bad to play and they force me to camp in a corner to be effective, then I'm not going to play them because it just won't feel right to me. Yeah, they're boring. If you're not a fun army, then yeah. Yeah. You're having fun with it, then uh, by all means. Yeah. That's why I got... Go on. That's why I got rid of my towers. Like, no, nope, bother playing these. Dude. No. <laughs> and now they're in a box <laughs> no, in my room. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I, I nearly... Nearly plump for Dark Eldar this edition. I nearly did. Oh. And then me and, uh, me and James are talking about how we don't actually have a Dark Eldar player. No, but the main reason I didn't yeah, was... There's very, there's very few armies that are between the lot of us that we don't actually have. Yeah, because we don't... Army. Blood Angels we don't have. Dark Eldar we don't have. Um, sisters. Sisters we don't have yet, although Sisters apparently with Celestine are in ridiculous right now. Um, mm. We... Metal system. I'm like, I could collect them at some point. <laughs> but not yet. No. Um, I mean, we've got garden back. Unless you enjoy eating. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, we... Eat my kidneys. <laughs> yeah, we've got guard back now because, James, you've got a little guard army going. Um... Well, yeah, I've, I have had them for a while, but I think in this edition I am going to focus on them a little bit, expand, um, expanding them. Yeah, um, we we can probably make Inari happen between the three of us if I got Dark Eldar, because you've got Eldari, I've got Drakari, and Kieran's got Quinn, so we can mash together. I've also got quite a few Quinns as well, actually. Have you? Okay, so Inari's yeah. accounted for. Orcs, Tau, Tyrannids, and Cults are taken care of between me and Kieran, and Rowan. Marines in general. Marine, I think the only Marines we don't have are Blood Angels right now. Yeah. Actually, does anybody yeah. play Vanilla Marines? I do I have got, that. I've I've got got them, but... Yeah, I haven't played it. It's been a while games. since I've got them out. Yeah, so I think it's just Dark Eldar um, and... Wolves. And Ben. We have Wolves. Um, Dark Eldar Sisters and... Uh, that's Blood about... Angel, yeah, Dark Eldar Sisters and Blood Angel is about the only hole in our group right now. Um, Any volunteers? Well, if Lady Malice gets rules in a model, I'll do it. Simple as that. Because her lore is so good, and I, I got very... Uh, my chat decided to hit the Mickey out of me when I talked when I mentioned Good Lilith. Good Michael. Good skulls. So, fuck off, James. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that I don't want my army to be led by Lilith for exactly that reason. Um, so, but Scourge's models. Oh my god, those models are gorgeous. So that there is a temptation to Dark Eldar now that they're not shit. Um, but hey, we'll see about that. Um, Kieran, I'm assuming Quins and Bugs for now? Yeah, I, I, I want to repaint all my Quins. I don't know how many more of them I'm actually going to get. Mm. Because I, I don't know how many more of them I need. But they could do the repaint and I'll, I'll bring them out again. Sounds um, good. But yeah, mostly, mostly Bugs. And James, you're going guard for the minute. Yes, that's, that's the main focus, basically. And Rowan Scions? I'm going to try to keep a balance between my Tau and my Scions. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to give Orc some time, and then if Tau gets... Uh, I'll keep giving the Tau a quick run out, but my Orcs are my focus, because, well, mm. God, I've got so many ideas. Um, <laughs> I think... I just want to quickly talk about the channel. Um, you don't need to contribute to this bit if you don't want to. But try and of, stop me. True, but <laughs> as of about now, we will have just passed the Dragon Ball Z level of subscribers. We will be over now. Did, did you just? Did you just? I did just. Kill that man. Did you just? I did just. As soon as we pass, I'm going to tweet it on Twitter, and I don't care. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm, I'm disband. I'm closing this server now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but, Continue. But basically, that means that we're heading for ten, um, and ten thousand is a bloody big number, and I'm kind of I've got no idea what to do. <laughs> Um, but I just want to say, um, in advance that, like, I've had this channel now through an entire edition, because I remember reporting on 7th, and, uh, yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm out of words right now, I don't know why. 
He's got a tear in his eye. I don't. I'm just. I'm not quite sure what to say. Ever since he was young, in his in fifth edition, he dreamed of this day. <laughs> to be honest, it's come. Ben's fault. Yes, um, I'm sure he very much dreamt of sitting in a in a Discord server with me, you, and. Uh, Kieran. Kieran. Exactly, it's everyone's team. Talking to, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, with 10,000 coming up, I'm gonna, I'm willing to take suggestions on what to do for 10K. Um, I'm thinking either, if it lines up, I've got a law video that I want to do, but it might turn out to be that we get there too fast. If we get there too fast... Subscribe for a little bit. <sighs> if we get there too fast, I want to give a go, either at a mega battle... But ideally a blitz or a meat grinder, because god those look fun. Or I would like to do a campaign, because they've given a little tree campaign in the rule book. And I think oh, I'd like to do that, there's yeah. only like three or four mm. games, and you could do it with two people, and we could have a big maybe not even a big Imperium stick or something. Just a little campaign that we could do just to just get to ten. And I think I'm willing to take suggestions from both you three and from the comments, so let me know. Uh, but that's just my thoughts, and it's coming sooner than I might have expected. Cause what do you want? What do you want now? Let me check. I'm about to hit nine thousand. Um, it, it might have actually passed nine thousand during this recording. I'm not sure. I'll well, check. Find out. Yeah, I'm curious myself. <laughs> also, if you type in Tactica now, uh, your name pops up instantly. By the way. Yeah, eight nine nine three. He's seven away. Yeah, at the time of recording. Quick, subscribe, make it. Make uh, by the time this video comes out, it probably will have made it. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at, and I just wanted to mention it before uh, before the day arrives and I start panicking. Um, actually, it, there is a, I haven't shown him off yet, so don't say anything, goddamn all of you. Uh, uh, okay. You know the one. There is. Uh, I, I don't think I do. There uh, is. Uh, I'm gonna quick, go after quick, it. quick PM me and I'll. And I'll, yeah, that. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, not ruin it. There but, uh, is there is something that I'm working on, but it uh, might. Yes, but that it, is, that's amazing. I'm but sure it's, the, uh, like, the guys will that. the guys will see the um, like first part of that, but I don't think it'll be ready. Like it's gonna be like the third year project. So that could be easily the twenty thousand subscriber video at this rate. Um, but yeah, that's something that's coming as well. Uh, I won't spoil it. Like that might go on a Saturday, take the place of a law video, just so I can knock the law videos back because I'm a little bit. Um, behind on getting a backlog um so anyway um it we're now coming up to an hour and i said i wouldn't go beyond an hour so that ladies and gentlemen if you put up with us for the past 11 minutes and haven't already bailed is that so is it? yeah so thank you to kieran ben rowan and james for coming along and getting their thoughts in and helping out you're welcome anytime my man it is appreciated, and you will see on uh, as of next week, Kieran is now able to film a battle report without my help, <laughs> so hopefully I won't need to be involved in every game, so if you guys ever want to just do games on your own and uh, send the files to me, you're more than welcome to do so, um, and we'll we'll work it out. Tell you what, Kieran, the amount of panicking you do off camera for that recording was hilarious. It probably didn't help uh, the like the heckling we were giving it. No, no. Uh, do, do you remember when we recorded my for our first eighth edition battle report? You were just making funny faces while I was doing the intro. That was not in fact, helpful. Um, in your in your video with um, with with Kieran, and I'm I'm kind of sat behind Kieran's deployment. Did you not notice me making hand gestures at the camera? I couldn't. It wasn't on the recording, so I wasn't looking. Uh, um, that's a shame. But yes, um, that's that, and you hopefully will see more of these guys either in our battle reports, whether it's with me or with Kieran or with neither of us in the future. And I'm sure maybe in future we'll do this again now that we're all on the same Discord server. We might sit down and talk about uh, army tactics individually or about the game as a whole. I'm sure we'll we'll be back. I'm sure. I mean, me, and, me and Rowan have been in this server for ages. I mean, you guys just haven't joined us. We didn't know it existed. I've been here since the start. I didn't know it existed. It's my server. It's your server. (laughs) Yeah, I I am the server. Yes, so before we hit an hour, uh, we'll wrap it up there. That's our thoughts on 8th edition and our plans going forward, as well as a little bit of talk about the channel. So, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts on 8th edition in the comments below, because I'm sure you've all got something to say. My name is Michael for Tatsuka Imperialis with my friends, the gaming group, our friends in quoted commas sometimes, and we will see you all in the future, I'm sure. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Goodbye.